Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. We're looking at Vault Duplicate Search. And uh, I'm Clint Brown, and I'm going to run you through the next few minutes. So today's webinar is probably going to take about 25 minutes, should be pretty quick, um, but really informative. And we're going to have a look at duplicate search from a technology point of view. We're going to understand some of the costs of duplicates and then how to get duplicate search working for you. So just so that I can make sure that everybody can hear me, um, could somebody raise their hand or pop a question into the chat just to let me know? Um, it looks like we have a hand raised. Okay, so I'm going to crack on then. So what we need to think about with new parts and, and duplicate parts is that a part is not just about the design time, it's about the time and costs of documenting, validating, producing, and managing the same physical part time and time again. So if we make a copy of something inadvertently, it costs us money. So I want to talk about today's business challenges before we get into this too deeply. Um, I moved to the UK 14 years ago, and I've been traveling up and down around Europe, talking to manufacturers like you, and some common themes seem to emerge. So that's me. Um, and these themes look something like this. If I talk to management teams, they all want a lower cost and free up working capital. Quality departments all want to improve quality and decrease risk. Supply chain all want to lower their inventory and reduce costs. Production teams all want to reduce waste and improve their throughput. Now, duplicates do cost a lot. And the things to think about is prototyping, testing, production, supply, and stock. If we've got a duplicate of something that already exists, we're reprototyping, retesting, resetting up production, dealing with new suppliers potentially, and having stock of these strange duplicates. So the Aberdeen Group did a study where they found that the annual carrying cost of introducing a new part is anywhere between 3,800 and 20,000 pounds per item. So I thought that was interesting and I did a little bit of searching for other studies. And in 2012, the US Defense Logistics Agency said that the average cost for adding a new part to an inventory is $27,500. So that's closer to that upper number that we saw before. So what we're learning from this is that it costs a lot of money to create a new part effectively. Now, most of you are probably saying, well, we don't have any duplicates. You know, we've, we use Vault, our data's tidy, we use enforce unique file names. It's not possible to have any duplicates inside of our, our Vault. Well, that's not strictly true. So anytime we do a file save as, or we use a copy design, it's quite easy to create an exact geometrical copy of a, of a component without, uh, and it could have a totally different um, set of properties like material or, or part numbers, but the geometry could be exactly the same. So it's quite easy to do. And generally what happens is designers don't even realize they're doing it. You know, with all good intentions, I'm going to make a copy of this original assembly and I'm going to reuse most of these components, but I'm going to copy these ones because I might use them in the design with the intention of swapping them out later. And what happens is project crunch comes, we get to the end of it and all of a sudden my new machine is rolling down the line and it's got about 30 new duplicates in there because I didn't have the time to fix them or I, could, I had no tools for figuring out what was actually a, geom uh, a geometric copy. So if we look at Vault's duplicate search tool, and we understand what Vault uh, classifies as a duplicate, you'll see here that um, it looks at certain things. So material density, uh, different orientations, and mirrors. So the inventor parts with the same geometry, um, and these are defined in the code that is used. It actually goes and looks at the surface area, the body volume, and the principal moments of inertia. And that's why components in a different orientation or with a different material or color or even a mirror will get picked up. Uh, what it doesn't do, and this is important to note as well, is it doesn't pick up non-solid bodies, so meshes and surfaces, and um, it doesn't work on assembly files or empty part files at this stage. So every day we design more and more duplicate parts. 
And from a management point of view, someone's probably sitting there pulling their hair out going, well, why don't you just reuse the parts that already exist? The problem with this is the tools that we have today are probably not fully, fully formed. You know, we don't have all of the tools we need. So searching can be quite a problem and it can be quite error prone because most of us are working on the metadata that exists inside a vault. So we're going by things like part number, description, material, the person who created it, the project, all of that good stuff that we use to find data, but we're not actually finding those specific duplicates. So without this intelligent tool to find, to find these components, it can be quite difficult. So if we look at this set of parts here, you know, there could be loads of duplicates inside of here and we're creating them every time we do a copy design or we, we do a file save as without realizing that those duplicate parts are actually impacting the bottom line of our business. So what are these hidden costs? Well, if we think about this, every time we bring in a new part, there's a management cost. We need to maintain our bombs. We've got to manage these bombs in engineering. We've got to manage them through an ERP system. We've got inventory costs, storage costs, shipping costs. We move through to our supply chain. There's lead times on those supply chains. We might have to manage multiple suppliers. Obsolescence becomes an issue. Are there accurate costs? Are there discrepancies? Have we got the same part with two different part numbers within two different suppliers in two different regions without realizing it? What happens with tooling? You know, you might, worst case scenario, have two tools that you've paid for that are for the same part, but most likely you might have two duplicate CNC tool parts that you've got to maintain. Or what about things like water jet and laser cut parts? There might be some DXFs floating around for, for these components that could become out of sync. From a production point of view, production teams never want to be setting up a component over and over again. We want one setup and we want to run it as many times as we can because that helps with our throughput. So it reduces production errors, um, you know, reduces reject rates and rework. So production teams don't want those sorts of duplicates floating in. But then if we look at a quality point of view, this is where things get interesting for companies. So from a design point of view, the quality department generally has to run through things with the engineering team or like design FMEAs and those sorts of things. But they then have to do inspections and quality approvals and all of those good parts and then look at things like audits. Then you have to wonder, well, are all of your parts treated equally? So in a previous life, I used to work for a company where we did automotive and industrial components and all of our automotive components ran through stringent quality controls, whereas our industrial components had a less stringent quality control. Um, but what if you had a component that sat between the two? And then what about failures? This is the big thing here. What happens if a duplicate part fails? Let's say we've got a safety critical bracket called bracket 001, and we've accidentally made bracket 002 and bracket 003 over the last five years, and these are out in the wild. Bracket 001 fails. Do we even know that brackets 002 and 003 are exactly the same bracket in the same or similar application out in the wild? We probably don't. How would we even find these parts? We don't have anything to go on. So we need an intelligent tool like Duplicate Search to try and find these problems and to fix these issues that could happen before they happen. So if we think about using a tool like Duplicate Search, and I'm going to show you how this tool works in a little bit, we can start addressing some of these hidden costs and some of these problems. So re reducing the duplicates in our designs can really help. So from a management point of view, we've got less duplicates, we can lower up costs and free up working capital. From a supply chain point of view, we lower our inventory and we reduce our costs. From a tooling point of view, we reduce redundancy and improve efficiency. From a production point of view, reduce waste, improve throughput. And from a quality point of view, improve quality and decrease risk. And that is a big thing. So if we can lower costs and decrease risk, we're going to make business owners everywhere happy. And think about those business challenges I spoke about earlier. Those all resonate with these key things that we can help reduce by getting rid of duplicates. So in 2016, a report by Wola came out and it said that 70% of spare parts are wasted. So 70% of spare parts that sit in warehouses today never get used. A lot of them end up in landfill. All right. So what about some real world examples of cost reduction? So the Dasha, uh, the Renault Dasha group, when they introduced the Logan uh, car, it's a little sedan, they decided to bring it to market with fewer parts. By reducing parts, um, they looked at all the stock in the Renault and the Nissan groups, and 
through part reduction, they brought the Logan to market with just under 6,000 components. Now, a comparable sedan has around 10,000 components. So you can imagine that by doing this cost, this um, consolidation of parts, they were able to bring this car to market um, with fewer parts. Now, that's not the success story. The success story here is actually the Duster. So the Duster is a low-cost four-wheel drive vehicle, and the Duster is made up of 70% of components that already existed. Now, the big thing about this is they bought this car to market in only three years. So from scratch to market in three years, reused 70% of components that already existed, and they were able to bring it to market 20 to 30% cheaper than all of its competitors. So by reducing components, they were able to bring a car to market faster and at a better price. That's incredible. So having less duplicate components, we're able to get to market faster, lower our costs, free up working capital, improve quality because these are known entities, um, decrease risk because we're using a, an existing supply chain, we've got components that we understand, uh, it reduces redundancy, it improves our efficiency, it lowers our inventory, and it gives us greater purchasing power. So really great example. And again, that resonates with those challenges that I spoke about at the top end of this presentation. So you're probably wondering, well, how does this apply to me? And I knocked together a quick savings calculator. So let's think about what it costs to have these duplicates. So let's say you have 5,000 new part numbers a year that come into your business and 8% of them are duplicates. You could save 400 parts being brought to market. Now, if you use that number of about 3,800, if we reduce that to 3,000 at 400 parts, that's 1.2 million pounds per annum it's costing you to carry these parts. Now, you're probably going, that's ridiculous. That number's too high. We don't do anything like that. Um, ours would be far more conservative. So I've got an idea for that. Let's say we only bought 1,000 new part numbers a year into production, and only 5% of them are duplicates. So we save 50 parts every year. We're not making those 50 duplicates. And each of those costs a very conservative 2,000 pounds at 50 parts. That's 100,000 pounds per annum that you're probably bringing into your design chain without realizing it. So bringing in Vault Duplicate Search could certainly help you recoup some of those costs. And remember, these costs add up really quickly. So design, validation, testing, tooling, machining, setup, pre-production, quality approvals, inventory, and stockholding. And think about those two uh, studies we saw, the Aberdeen Group coming in at between 3,800 and 20,000 pounds per annum, and the US Defense Logistics Agency coming in at $27,000, or probably about 25,000 pounds. That's a lot of money that gets used up in our systems just by having a duplicate floating around. All right, so let's look at the technology here. Let's have a look at the people that use Vault and duplicate searches. So if we were to look at our engineering manager here, Tom, as an engineering manager, you want to know about what data is already duplicated, how we find this data, and how we make people reuse it, or how we promote the reuse of this data. So the good news is inside of Vault 2021, Vault Professional, I should say, we have a duplicates dashboard, and we can run reports. So here we can see groups of all of the components that are duplicates. So there's 12, this one has eight, and as we click through, we can see the different duplicates and all of the groups. If we look at this fan cover over here, we can see that there's eight duplicates and we can click on the little Vault icon. It takes us directly into Vault. Here we can see the fan cover itself and we can see all of the information about it. We can also export these reports to Excel. Send this one out to Excel quickly. And we can also send them out to PDF and Word. Now, these exports all behave the same way, so we'll have a look at the Excel one first. Inside of Excel, we can see all of our groups, and we can then see our duplicates dashboard, and we can click through these groups, and it'll take us to the relevant sheet for the group. We can see that specific information, and again, we can click through and go to Vault as well. Our PDF version, much the same. Get our duplicates dashboard up the top, we can move through or we can click on the bookmarks and we can see each of the groups available and we can then click back through to vault as well so really handy duplicates dashboard reporting and this just means that an engineering manager has full control 
You can start understanding where those problems are, and then you can start looking at um, methods to mitigate that. So maybe different ways of removing those duplicates from production. So what about our design engineer, Christina? Well, you know, you want to continue working the way that you do. You want to continue using copy design. You don't want to have to worry about changing the way that you currently work, but you want tools like a geometric search with an inventor to have a look at duplicates. So in this example over here, what I've done is I've copied the beige cover that you see over here, and I've put in a copy, and it's just a red, that red component that you see over there. So that red one is the exact copy of the beige one to its right. Now, if I click on Find Duplicates and I click on a component, so that side cover, I can search my entire vault. And what it shows me is that there are no duplicates. So that's great. I can then click on the side cover over there, do a search, and it brings back two results. So I can see that there's one that's been used in two places and one that's been used nowhere. So that's really interesting. I can look at the one that's been used in two places and I can have a look at its details. And I can actually see that it's got some design history in the background there. There's some versions, there's some where used. I can see it's actually used in Vault. So I've got an idea that it's been used and is an actual component. If I look at the one with no history and nowhere used, I quickly realize that that's just a duplicate. So what I can do is from inside of Inventor, I can just go replace all. It tells me that that occurrence has been replaced and it now gets rid of the duplicate for me. I can then check this into Vault, knowing that I'm not introducing a new duplicate and I can quite happily carry on with my design. So that's a really compelling way of using it. The technology is really user-friendly and very um, easy to use. The searches are great. The duplicate dashboards are fantastic for your, your managers and the in-CAD experience is great for the users. So you're probably wondering, how do I get duplicate search? So duplicate search is for Vault Professional only and Vault Professional 2021 is the best place to get it. It was initially released as part of a point release with Vault 2020.2, which requires an ADMS upgrade. But actually, the Vault Pro version is, uh, in 2021 is better because some of the in-CAD and the reporting has been improved. So Vault 2021 Professional is the best place to get duplicate search. Now, if you're on Vault Basic or Vault Workgroup, your Vault can be upgraded to Vault Professional. Um, it's a an easy upgrade, it's not a big deal to do, particularly from Vault Workgroup, your, your workflow doesn't change at all, it's really simple. If you don't have Vault and you have loads of data all over the place, now's a great time to get into data management. So you want a document management system that understands your CAD files and Vault's the best thing for that. And with Vault Professional, you can get this duplicate search. The other thing is you can take all of your existing data, we can load it into Vault using a data loader and we can then index all of those files and we can start understanding how the, uh, what your duplicate situation looks like and then you can start running different tasks to start mitigating those problems within your system. Okay, so I'm a big fan of W. Edwards Deming and he says, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. So this is a great example of, or a great opportunity for us to start using data to form an opinion about our data and to start understanding the impact that our CAD data has on our businesses and the impact of these duplicates on our day-to-day -day work. So before I hand over to the questions, um, next steps after this, please ask any questions um, in, in the chat box and I'll, I'll answer them all on our presentation. But talk to your account manager. I've, I've put a, a screenshot up of, of people from your local areas. Uh, have a chat to them, they can help with upgrades or any questions like that. So those are your account managers in your local areas. And at this stage, we've got a few minutes to go. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, one question that's come in. Does Vault work, does Duplicate Search work with Vault Basic? No, uh, you'd need to upgrade to Vault Professional. And as I said before, Vault Professional 2021 will give you the best experience for um, Duplicate Search. 
and it is an upgrade so it can go on top of your existing server and um, your users will then have access to block duplicate search. Another question, does it use the job processor? Yes. So all of your those properties that we saw in the slide where, where it looked at the, the, um, the physical properties of the component, when a file is checked into Vault, it's actually added to that index. And we can see it there. Um, question here, only available with Vault? Yes, only available with Vault uh, Professional. Can you tune the search parameters? Um, not in this current release. Um, as it stands, you can only search on the geometry that you choose. Next question, when will it include assemblies? Uh, at this stage, we can only search on parts. Um, so the current release only searches on parts. I don't have an answer for when it'll be uh, updated to include assemblies, but you never know. That could come in a future release, but I don't have an answer to that or a firm date. All right, well, I'm going to leave this open for a couple more minutes for you to type in any questions that you might have. I'd like to thank you so much for attending. Um, I understand that everybody's time is precious, so I really appreciate everybody sticking through the presentation and staying for the Q&A. Um, we're coming up to our 25 minutes, which is spot on. It's nice, short and sharp. So you've got a few more moments to type in a question. Um, I'll keep this open. I don't want to go before you, you know, if you're frantically typing a question over there. Uh, a recording of this will be made available by Symmetry, so you can share it with uh, any of your colleagues afterwards. And again, thank you so much for your time. We, we do really appreciate you being on these calls with us. All right, it looks like there's no more questions, so I'm going to wrap it up. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and we'll speak soon.